okay fine so uh, let us uh, start today's session so in the last class uh, we people have discussed regarding the introduction part of the internet of things and applications we have discussed what exactly the term network is and what exactly the term things is okay and we have also understood how exactly the objects are being present okay so objects those are the uh, smart things okay they have wifi which is being embedded within them for communication purpose okay so whatever the objects are there they have uh, embedded in them the wifi module which is specifically utilized for communication purpose we have also discussed regarding the characteristics of internet of things we have discussed regarding the challenges of internet of things okay so you can expect a 4 to 6 marks question regarding the characteristics of internet of thing and the challenges of internet of things okay so this is one very important uh, topic uh, which you people have to remember okay and then uh, we have also discussed regarding the uh, applications okay uh, we have illustrated it uh, with a few examples uh, such as the wearable tech uh, that is the smart watch the fitness bands uh, which you people will be using for tracking your uh, daily activities okay whatever the heart beat rate the step count is there all the things will be uh, recorded so that is one of the most important thing you people have to remember okay so uh, we have taken a look at a wearable tech and we have understood how exactly the wearable tech works okay whatever the smart watch okay which are being available in the market the most popular one okay you have uh, the samsung's galaxy smart watch that is uh, one example you have and uh, uh, you have uh, the apple smart watch uh, and uh, another one popular is uh, of uh, xiaomi uh, the my fitness band and also the smart watch okay those are also Uh, the popular one okay what they will be doing they are the iot devices when i am talking about iot devices what exactly they will be doing they will be monitoring okay so whenever you use it okay they will be continuously monitoring and they are uh, working on a battery okay so you need to charge it okay when uh, the charging goes down okay you have to charge it so that you can use it okay so that is one important thing which you have to remember okay so those are just iot devices which will be uh, monitoring capturing the data so specifically speaking the fitness band the smart watch they will be monitoring your uh, step counts the calories burnt okay uh, so various uh, health related informations are being stored not only stored they are being utilized for analysis purpose okay so they are being stored uh, when when you use the application okay at that time you will be giving a consent to uh, give the uh, access to the personal data at that moment itself you, uh, the terms and conditions will be present and accordingly you will be using it okay so uh this is one sample illustrative example which we have taken a look and in health sector you have various applications one sample example is of use of pacemakers okay the pacemakers uh whenever uh, a patient is suffering from some heart related problems uh, the patient okay uh, whenever the patient is suffering from heart related problems okay and they go on Uh, with a surgery heart surgery okay so at that time a pacemaker will be implanted okay uh, it will keep a track of the uh, entire uh, whatever the health related uh, issues are there accordingly it will uh, keep track of that particular thing store the data and later on the doctors will use that 
data for diagnosis purpose okay so this is just a illustrative example we have seen in the last class and another one sample example uh, which we have taken a look was a smart refrigerator regarding the smart refrigerator as i told you uh, it has uh, uh sensors uh, which are being embedded within the refrigerator which will help uh, in uh, capturing monitoring continuously whatever the items which you place in the refrigerator it will track it down if uh, uh, if the things are not uh, under mark okay uh, then it will uh, give a notification to the smartphone so that uh, you can uh, uh buy online whatever the items uh, which you want accordingly so this is just a illustrative example we have taken a look okay so uh then again uh, we have also taken a look uh, uh, the criticisms and the controversies uh, uh, which are being present when you are using the internet of things uh, we have talked about the privacy privacy is the biggest concern okay uh, in a european countries Uh, there are policies and frameworks uh, certain guidelines are being made uh, by which uh, the things are to be utilized okay so uh, that is one thing we have uh, taken a look uh, regarding the security when i am talking about the security uh, what you have to remember is uh, here uh, when i am talking about the security uh, as the devices are very tiny okay a limited security will be uh, provided and it is a concern because uh, hackers uh, the penetration testers uh, they will be always uh, uh, keeping track of the devices and if there are vulnerabilities if certain weaknesses are present they will always uh, look after the vulnerabilities the loopholes the weaknesses and accordingly they will try to penetrate the system and the thing is it's a biggest concern for example uh, in the last class i have told regarding the ip camera the cameras which are being installed uh, they will be monitoring 24 cross 7 okay and if say for example if some hacker if the some penetration tester without your authorization okay access the uh, data okay whatever the things are there so that is a big threat okay that is a big uh, threat and that need to be resolved sooner okay uh, that is one most important thing which you have to remember when i am talking about high level logical partitioning of the uh, interaction space uh, we come across human to human communication uh, machine to machine communication human to machine communication okay you have mih uh, the example for this one is wearable tech so you have embedded chips which are being utilized for monitoring and whatever the data which is being generated it will be given to the cloud so we have also taken a look at this uh, interesting uh, diagrams so these uh, diagrams uh, represent how exactly the communication takes place Uh, this is a venn diagrams okay uh, and these venn diagrams show you the communication which is being uh, taking place uh, one is a human to human communication that is being referred to as a h to h you have a m to m uh, which is a machine to machine communication okay so whatever the intersection you can uh, see in the venn diagram it is a human to machine uh, communication okay Uh, you also have a mih uh, the prominent examples for mih is a wearable devices okay so this is a, uh, a very interesting diagram okay you don't have to draw the graphical representation of a peoples uh, just giving the circles and uh, mentioning what exactly they are it is more than enough in the examination okay so uh, this is very important uh, diagram you have to practice it Uh, so that uh, you can uh, represent it okay so you have to practice it uh, uh, two to three times so that uh, you can draw these particular figures okay and uh, it is easy also if you practice it uh, two three times you can easily draw these particular figures okay uh, then 
later on take a look uh, okay ipv6 role we have also taken a look in the last class regarding the ipv6 role what we have discussed regarding this is iot devices when i am talking about a smart objects yes, sir. yes sir. please sir hmm. uh, what is the mih in the venn diagram sir MIH, it is uh, the interface which is being utilized. So uh, I have given a sample example of uh, wearable tech, okay, such as smartwatch, the fitness band. The fitness band and the smartwatch are the examples of MIH, okay. So it is an interface. So you are wearing it and you, uh, you are tracking it, okay. So as you are using uh, it, uh, whatever the things, uh, the smartwatch it may be, or a fitness band it may be, okay. So these uh, uh, come under the category of MIH. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. Clear, okay. clear. Okay, fine. So again, I repeat once again. Remember when I am talking about MIH, what you have to uh, know is. MIH, these are the communication devices which we use it on our body. Okay. So, such as wearable tech. When I am talking about wearable tech, I have given a lot of examples. The most popular one, the Samsung Galaxy Watch. Okay. Specifically, the brand name shouldn't be mentioned, but still, for your understandability, I am telling the brand name also. Okay. There are in general, I can say smart watches. Okay, that's it. But the popular one, the brand name, if I take, uh, there are most popular one are the Samsung's Galaxy smartwatch. You have Apple's smartwatch. You have Xiaomi's uh, My Fitness Band and smartwatches. What exactly they will do? They will show you the timing. Okay, the basic thing. In addition to that one, they show you the step counts. Whatever the steps, uh, uh, whatever the, the walking you have done in a particular day, the entire day, the number of step counts it will show. Okay. It will also show the heartbeat rate. It will also show the calories burnt, uh, how much amount of water you have consumed. Okay. Whatever the health related data, such as the blood pressure, okay, the BP. So, what is the uh, level? of the BP and uh, what should be the normal BP. Accordingly, all the things systematically, the sensors which are being embedded in the uh, wearable text will uh, capture it, monitor it continuously, whatever the data being generated, it will be saved in a cloud. Provided uh, you should have a proper uh, battery uh, charge okay if the battery is drained you need to charge it that is a limitation you can say okay it is a limitation because when the battery gets drained automatically at last moment it will get switched off okay you have to charge it once again then you can use it so these are some uh, sample illustrative examples which come under the category of mih okay then let us take a look at ipv6 role we could have also used IPv4 for addressing purpose, but as we are talking about Internet of Things, billions of devices will be added. Okay. So when I am saying billions of devices will be added per day, you can just imagine within a span of a few days, you will have a lot of data will, which will be generated. Okay. So whatever the devices which are being added in the network, each of the device will be generating certain amount of data. Okay. And the thing is, it's a big challenge. And recognizing of each device is also a challenge. Okay. So IPv4 addressing is not sufficient for that purpose. For that purpose, we are switching over to IPv6 addressing. Okay. So this is one important thing. You have to remember. So remember one important point. IPv6, it has a 128-bit address, whereas IPv4, it has a 32-bit address. Okay. So here, 
the objects can be tagged with a network address every object then has a tuple uh, it has a object identifier it has a network address that is always unique so that is one most important thing it has oid it is object identifier and it has nadr it is a network address then uh, we will take a look at the next slide wait a minute okay talking about the security uh, so security is one of the most important uh, uh, point when we are talking about uh, uh, the addressing okay so ipv6 includes and requires a security in its specifications such as a payload encryption okay whatever the data is there that is the payload okay so and authentication of a source of the communication so authentication is required so that we can avoid the man in the middle attack okay so ipv6 can run end to end security with a built in strong ip layer encryption and authentication okay another one important point is mobility okay so ipv6 includes an efficient and a robust mobility mechanism namely an enhanced support for mobile ip specifically the set of mobile ipv6 so mobility plays a very important role okay so when i am talking about mobility it should include efficiency also it should be robust also meaning of robust is error tolerant okay if some part of uh, noise is there it should be acceptable some part of error should be acceptable then it is called as error tolerant system that is a robust system okay so ipv6 will make man in middle attacks okay still it is vulnerable to man in middle attack so uh, additional security is required okay uh, you can't say any system as 100% secure because there will be always some or another vulnerability but what level of security you are applying it depends on the environment in which you are deploying it okay so uh, for this uh, uh, i will give one illustrative example suppose you are visiting a bank okay uh, what you will observe there uh, if it is a, a bank at a rural region what sort of thing you will observe yeah uh, just uh, one uh, one small bank will be there with a small locker will be there okay so that is the level of security you can see okay if you go in a metros and compare the same thing uh, what you can see there you can uh, uh, see the high level of security so the environment matters the deployment where exactly you are deploying it it matters accordingly whatever the things okay uh, the security uh, is not 100% but you can give more and more level of security to make it much more secure okay so that it cannot be breached at that level okay uh, another one sample illustrative example which i can give you is uh, as uh, in a cryptography and network security subject also you people have studied it uh, one is a micro financing another in a, uh, another one is a macro financing okay i repeat the term once again one is a micro financing another one is a macro okay macro financing what's the difference between micro financing and macro financing the micro financing it is a small transaction okay it's a very small transaction macro trans, uh, macro is a very large transaction okay so what level of security you can apply what cryptographic algorithms you can use because when you are using a high level cryptographic algorithms the computation cost will be high computation cost will be very high okay the thing is for a micro financing you will give limited security because small transaction you are doing if you are doing macro uh, financing then uh, the bulk transaction will take place when there is a bulk transaction you have to give high end security okay that is one very important thing which you have to remember 
I hope you have got it. Is it or not? Whatever I told now, just now. I have given an illustrative example of a security. How the security will be applied based on the environment in which it is deployed. Student, you can speak up. Have you understood the uh, micro financing and macro financing which I told you just now? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So remember. Security can't be hundred percent, but we can increase the level of security. Okay, in environment we are deploying accordingly, we will increase the level of security so that there will not be breaches. Okay, there will not be any security breach. We will always try to avoid it. Okay, for that purpose we are doing it. But when we increase the level of security, the computation cost. Will increase, okay. The computation cost will increase, okay. So we have to take a look at more things. There is always a trade-off, okay. There is always a trade-off, okay. So uh, you have to take a look at the environment in which you are deploying it, okay. So IPv6 will make a man in the middle attacks. Scalability IPv6 allows to connect a trillions of IoT devices, okay. Enormous number of devices can be added, and the growth of the network. Okay, it will be growing like anything. Okay, so IPv6 supports that one specifically for that purpose. We are using it. You have voice over internet protocol capability. You have a multicasting capability. Let us take a look at the next slide. Wait a minute. Okay. So this is a pictorial representation. Uh, let us take a look at this pictorial representation. And I have take uh, told you in the previous session also regarding this one. You can observe here in this picture. You have a weather server. Wait a minute. I think uh, one student is waiting in a lobby. I will just uh, admit that candidate. Okay. So I was uh, talking regarding this uh, pictorial representation. Here I was talking regarding this uh, weather server, the traffic server, the medical server, uh, the caregiver physician, the police video server, pollution data aggregation. Okay, so whatever these uh, servers are there, all these are being uh, connected uh, to a network and broadly speaking to the internet. And in turn, uh, whatever the data is there, it can be accessed through the home network. Okay, so uh, this is just a illustrative example. And again, I am telling you don't require any graphical representation. You can just uh, mention a box and uh, mention the label weather server, traffic server. That's it. And here the clouds with uh, uh, routers. If you mention that one, also more than sufficient. Okay, you can make the things simpler when you are drawing the diagrams okay few diagrams are there they are much complex but still what is the concept behind that one you have to understand that one and in your simpler uh, sense you can easily make it uh, uh, much more simpler diagram okay you can make a complex diagram also much simpler okay you have to just understand the concept okay let us take a look at the next slide. Uh, the technical challenges. When I am talking about the technical challenges uh, here, uh, the current manner of using the IP addresses must change to a system that provides an IP address to every possible object that may need it. The power behind the embedded chips on such a devices will need to be smaller and more efficient. So here, when I am talking about uh, uh, the challenges, okay, uh, when you are talking about the IoT devices, billions of devices will be added. And in addition to that one, when a certain duration of time passes, you have trillions of devices being added. Okay. It's very huge. And the thing is, it will form a network. Okay. For communication purpose. And each of the device needed to be identified uniquely, which is being represented with a OID, which is called as object identifier. And the thing is, specifically speaking, if one 
object want to communicate with another object then it has to mention the object identifier for exchange of the data okay the power behind the embedded chips on such a devices will need to be smaller okay it is a battery operated uh, that is a limitation you can say battery operated devices it is a limitation of internet of thing okay because uh, when the drainage occurs uh, what's the next thing it need to be recharged okay as you do it for your mobile mobile is a biggest sensor okay whatever the smartphone you are using it now also okay it is a biggest sensor it is a iot device and the thing is it is continuously monitoring capturing storing and sending the data to the cloud okay that is the thing i have given one sample illustrative example okay the software application must be developed that can communicate with uh, and manage the stream of data from hundreds of interconnected non computing devices that comprises a smart system which can adapt and respond to changes okay whenever there is certain uh, uh changes required okay it should be possible to do it it should not be rigid it should be flexible okay i repeat it should not be rigid it should be flexible okay next uh, moving on to the next slide let us take a look at the next slide the 31th wait a minute okay uh, the machine to man machine communication uh, that is uh, being abbreviated as m to m communication uh, the m to m describes the devices uh, that are connected to the internet using a variety of fixed and wireless network in the last class also i told you regarding this particular thing uh, you can either go for a wired connection or else you can go for a wireless connection it is uh, optional okay and it depends on the environment in which you are deploying it okay wherever it is feasible you will use a wired connection wherever it is not feasible you will go for a wireless connection okay uh they are active communication devices the term embedded wireless has been coined for a variety of applications okay you have embedded devices which are uh, used for communication from one end to another end that is one thing uh, wireless cellular communication is used to connect any device that is not a phone this term is widely used uh, the gsm association okay so whatever the devices which are being uh, connected okay it can be wired connection it can be wireless connection the thing is uh, what is the backbone is the internet you require a internet connection for communication purpose without internet the devices cannot communicate with each other so what is the prerequisite there should be a proper internet connection okay uh, for this uh, i will give one illustrative example of a smart home in a smart home whatever the doors are there okay the lights are there the speaker the television the refrigerator whatever the things are present they are smarter and with the help of voice command itself you can control it you don't have to physically go and switch on or switch off the light you don't have to physically go and open the door or close the door with just a voice command you can switch on switch off the light open the door or close the door okay so what is the prerequisite here is the basic internet connection okay if you don't have it then it everything is dead okay it will not work you should have a good internet connection for working of the objects which are being placed in the smart home okay so this is just a illustrative example which i have given okay then we have also talked sir, regarding ah uh, yeah sir this is m to m means a machine to machine na sir yes machine to machine communication yes yes sir, uh, hmm. sir there uh, one more thing uh, uh, that gsm something was there na sir in the previous slide yeah uh, hmm. what it stands for sir gsm something gsm association global, global system for mobile communication okay okay sir thank you sir so, so uh, these were the things uh, we have discussed in the last session also uh, regarding the m2m communication 
and uh, regarding this uh, uh, how exactly the communication occurs and uh, we have also taken a look at uh, uh, this uh, uh, sensors which are being uh, used you have various sensors which are being used uh, in the network whatever the smart objects which are using these sensors it is of uh, a uh, specific purpose when i am talking about temperature sensor what is the specific task it will be doing it will just uh, uh, sense the temperature of the environment and accordingly it will provide the readings okay uh, you have humidity sensor etc okay uh, biochemical sensors all the things uh, whatever the uh, you know uh, nuclear uh, power plants uh, uh, there are uh, millions of sensors which are being implanted and each of the sensors will be performing a specific task and accordingly it will uh, notify the owner okay so that is one most important thing uh, we have discussed and uh, uh, next one we have talked about the activators also uh, what are activators and how they are different from sensors as i told you regarding sensors the basic task of a sensor is to sense okay in a human body what are the senses okay uh, you are just watching okay so with the help of your eye you are watching that is one sense okay the nose by which you are uh, it is just used for uh, uh, smelling purpose okay whatever the aroma whatever the things are present whether it is bad whether it is good accordingly it will sense it okay the smell okay uh, the ears for hearing purpose the ears for hearing purpose okay whatever the noise or whoever is talking accordingly the ear helps in hearing what exactly uh, it whether it is a voice whether it is a noise etc okay so these are the senses touch touch is also one sense okay so basically speaking here the machines uh, too are being uh, developed in that manner okay we have sensors which are being uh, implanted so that the machines can know what exactly the things are happening in the environment external environment okay and for a particular task uh, what exactly are needed accordingly those type of sensors are being utilized okay let us come across the activators when i am talking about activator an activator is a mechanized device okay when i am talking about mechanized device they will perform certain action okay for example in a nuclear power plant if a temperature reaches say for example 85 degree celsius then use the uh, or perform certain action then activators will be implanted there are motor activity which will get uh, the event will get triggered and a certain action will be performed okay so these are the uh, one of the beneficial things of activators they will perform certain action okay when a uh, when a certain things threshold is being reached certain limits are being reached accordingly they need to act there will be events the events whenever the uh, events uh, there will be a trigger that particular thing will get executed okay so uh, here also one sample illustrative example is being provided controlling a mechanism or a system opening or closing a valve okay so just uh, opening a valve or closing a valve this is just a sample illustrative example of activators starting a some kind of a, or a rotary or a linear motion or initial physical locomotion okay so these are just illustrative examples of activators this is a, a pictorial representation of uh, the uh, direction for standardization okay so here at the left end you can uh, see at the topmost existing infrastructure in existing infrastructure you can see the service infrastructure the network infrastructure at the uh, middle you can see 
harmonizing with existing infrastructure because what will happen if you are using some new infrastructure it should be compatible with the existing infrastructure okay if it is not then whatever the things uh, the new infrastructure is built it can't uh, get connected with the existing one okay it should be a major uh, major point that need to be taken into account okay it should be able to communicate with the existing infrastructure if a, if a new or a modern infrastructure is being developed what is the care to be taken is it should be able to get connected with the existing infrastructure okay harmonizing with the existing infrastructure okay and another one is uh, uh, conflicting with the existing infrastructure if there are some legacy systems how to deal with the legacy system that is also one important concern that need to be resolved okay so whatever the uh, rightmost at the rightmost you can see the iot concept enhancement of existing infrastructure if uh, whatever the legacy systems are there what are, what are the improvements that you can make uh, to the existing infrastructure that also matters okay so whenever you are going for a new infrastructure okay you should take care that it should be able to connect with the existing infrastructure so that is most important point to be remembered okay so wait a minute okay uh, so here i will conclude the session uh, if you have any uh, anything to ask if you have any doubts uh, you are always welcome the two minutes for that purpose if you want to ask or if you want to ask some uh, something you can always excuse me sir yes sir uh, in the starting uh, slide uh, there was an ipv6 what it stands for sir ipv6 so ipv6 it is a internet protocol okay Achha. so okay. version 6 internet protocol version 6 okay Achha. so uh, ipv4 it is internet protocol version 4 okay, okay sir so basically speaking iot devices because uh, there are huge number of devices uh, billions to trillions of devices will be present yes sir. we require uh, for each of the device we require a unique object identifier and oh. basically that particular object need to communicate with another object for that purpose we are switching from ipv4 to ipv6 for okay. better communication purpose okay uh, so then uh, m for the uh, for this one sir m i p v6 uh, m stands for sir uh which one you are telling m to m communication no no sir uh, in that slide only ipv6 after that uh, some mipv6 was there uh, what okay them? that one is just a interface that is I, just okay. a interface what is the speciality of interface is it is uh, it supports wearable technology when i say wearable technology over the body over the body whatever the uh, gadgets you are using it okay mm -hmm. what yes, is the gadgets you are using it it mm -hmm. will capture monitor and analyze the data yes sir i understood sir I understood okay fine okay. thank you sir thank you okay here i can conclude the session yes sir yes sir uh, thank you one and all for attending today's class thank you